Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Yen. I'm the Director of Marketing for Shield Healthcare. Welcome to our fourth webinar on uh, Osmi Life, a Shield Healthcare community. This presentation will address how to dress with an ostomy, how to sleep with an ostomy, and intimacy with an ostomy. Your presenter today is Laura Cox, our ostomy lifestyle specialist. Uh, participants will be in a listen-only mode. If you have a question for Laura, please type it in the chat box to the right-hand side of your screen. Um, if you miss any portion of this webinar, uh, it will be posted on our shieldhealthcare.com slash ostomylife. Um, community page. At this time, I'd like to pass the presentation over to Laura Cox. Laura. Hi, thanks, Eric. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for our webinar today. Like Eric said, this webinar will be recorded and made available on our community site. The link is at the bottom of this slide and also on the last slide, so you'll have plenty of time to write that link down. If you would like to see any of our past webinars, since this is our fourth webinar, they had topics including traveling with an ostomy, telling someone about an ostomy and skincare, and many other topics. And these are also available on the community site. So like Eric said, today's topics are how to dress, how to sleep, and intimacy with an ostomy. And I would also like to point out that we do have a photo contributor to this webinar, and that is Eric from Vegan Ostomy. So thank you so much, Eric. So I want to introduce myself really quickly before we get into the bulk of this webinar. My name is Laura Cox, and as Eric said, I am the Ostomy Lifestyle Specialist for Shield Healthcare. My story is a very typical one. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2010. I went through all of the medications that were approved for ulcerative colitis at the time, including a double dose of Remicade, Imuran, Prednisone, the works. Um, I have been in ileostomate since December of 2011, and 10 days before I was getting ready for surgery, I started looking into information about how life was like with an ostomy, what it would be like. And I was looking for things like intimacy, uh, diet, how to dress, um, how to tell someone about your ostomy, and I couldn't really find much of what I was looking for. So. Since it wasn't there, I decided to make it. So I founded a YouTube channel called Ostomy Story. And um, I documented basically two years of my life with my ostomy. Two years after that, uh, Comedy Central's Tosh.0 found me and asked me to do a celebrity profile. I went on national TV and talked about my stoma. And through that, the CEO of Shield Healthcare saw it and brought me on board. So as the ostomy lifestyle specialist, I really, my goal is to encourage a full, happy, confident life with an ostomy and also to provide resources and support to the community. I do really quickly, before we start the webinar, want to say that I am not a doctor and any clinical questions should be directed towards a physician or a WOCN. All right, so now that all of that is aside, let's start with the actual bulk of the webinar. So our first topic is how to dress with an ostomy. And I can tell you that when I first got my ostomy, I thought I would be destined to wearing baggy clothes the rest of my life. And I didn't think that it would be possible to dress the way that I wanted to. But after I started to heal, I started looking for solutions and I found ways to wear pretty much whatever I wanted. So I really think that the secret is underneath the clothing. Um, so here are some tighter options for underneath the clothing. So I use Spanx every day. And Spanx, like the bottom two left pictures, are um, tight enough to flatten out the output and distribute it evenly. So it really just flattens everything and makes the ostomy really, really discreet. I do want to mention that any of these tighter options, if your abdomen is sore or distended, you should probably opt for a less tight option, which will be on the slide to follow. Also, I want to say with the tighter option to try to keep the pouch only one third to one half full. 
Otherwise, it can start to show underneath. It can start to put a little pressure on your abdomen, and you really don't want that. Lastly, I want to note that if you have a diverting ileostomy like me, if the pouch gets too full, then sometimes the output can go back into the ostomy and come out your bottom. So some other tight options, including Sphinx, are the compression shirts and tanks. And these can be found at any Dick Sporting Goods or any kind of uh, sports store. And they are the pictures, the two top right pictures. And also um, spandex biker shorts, and that's the bottom right picture. And these are the same idea as the Sphinx. It really is just tight enough to flatten out the output and distribute the output evenly so that it's as discreet as possible. So here are the less tight options I wanted to talk about. So belly bands are a really, really great option for someone who wants a little less tight option. And this is in the bottom left-hand corner. You can see Eric from Vegan Ostomy wearing it. And this is what women who are pregnant usually wear for extra support. And this is just a great way to, once again, keep your ostomy close to your abdomen, but not so tight. Also, bandos are a less tight option, and they still secure the ostomy, and this is the top right picture. And you can find these at any department store, the belly bands and the bandos. There are also, also specially designed ostomy wraps, stealth belts, stoma guards, and specifically um, designed undergarments that have a pocket inside to hold your ostomy and keep it away from the skin. And they are these pictures you see from left to right, the stroma guard, the specially designed underwear from Ostomy, and um, the stealth belt. So these products really help to keep the Ostomy bag flat, close to your abdomen, and really discreet when it's still filling up. So next I want to talk about clothing solutions if you don't want to wear any of the undergarments or you're still looking for clothing solutions even after wearing the undergarments that I've talked about prior. So, of course, dark colors conceal better than light colors, and patterns trick the eye and draw attention away from any bulges. I just want to note also that these are the women's slides, and men's slides will follow. Loose t-shirts hang away from the abdomen. Any sort of cinched waist flows away from the body, works really well. Um, it also draws the attention up to um, a little higher than where the ostomy actually is. Also, high-waisted pants, shorts, and skirts do the same. They draw attention above the ostomy, but it's important to note to make sure that the waistline isn't hitting directly on the stoma. If it is, then I would suggest using a stoma guard just because it's not good to have constant pressure on your stoma from any sort of waistline. Other tips are that pleated trousers allow for more room for the pouch to fill, so you won't necessarily have to empty your pouch as frequently if it has all of this room to expand. And a good tip is to bring a light jacket, a loose sweatshirt, or a scarf with you so that when your bag starts to fill up, you can put it on and it will really just hang right in front of the ostomy and not have anything noticeable there. So these are the men's slides. It's easy for men to conceal an ostomy too, and really the same tips do apply. A lot of these tips for men and women are similar, but I really just wanted to show you what both look like. So left to right, dark color patterns distract the eye from any bulges, and this is Eric from Vegan Ostomy, and he does have an ostomy. I know it doesn't look like it, so all the pictures I've used in the how to dress section, we do have our ostomies there. Uh, loose t-shirts don't cling to the on pouch, and wearing heavier jackets, sweatshirts, and sweaters do conceal me better, especially if they do have pockets, because it adds an extra bulk to the outfit. Some extra tips for men are that suspenders allow you to wear pants with a little looser waistline, so if you still do have a distended belly, um, this is a great option. So it keeps your pants up, but they're a little looser, and it, it's really nice to have a little extra space for your ostomy to expand. Also, high-waisted pants for men um, and trousers allow the pouch to fill, and they really do draw the attention above the ostomy. 
So our next topic is sleeping with an ostomy. And sleeping with an ostomy was actually a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. Uh, these are some common complaints that I hear from people, and also uh, I've experienced all of these as well. So I have to empty my pouch one to two nights one to two times per night. The weight of the pouch wakes me up. I can't find a comfortable position, and I have major anxiety about having a leak. So let's talk about this, um, oh, sorry about that. Let's talk about this first complaint. I have to get up one to two times throughout the night to empty my ostomy pouch. So some of the solutions for this are, for the first couple months, Really, I would set an alarm for about every three to four hours to get up and empty the ostomy, or it will get too full and result in a blowout. But as time goes on, your body adjusts to your new anatomy, and your intestines get better at stopping up the liquid, and it slows the transit time a little bit. So you won't have to get up as frequently throughout the night. Another good tip is to try to not eat or drink anything an hour or two before bed. But that being said, it's okay to have a quick, small snack 15 minutes before bed. When you chew, it actually triggers intestinal emptying, so it clears out the rest of your GI tract before bed. You can also use night drainage bag or other larger ostomy pouching products, and this will just give you more time before you have to get up and empty. Also, if you are an ileostomate, ask your doctor if it's okay to take Imodium or Gasex before bed, or both. Uh, this will just help you slow down your transit time. The second complaint is the weight of the pouch wakes me up. So a couple of solutions for this is to secure your ostomy with the type of pajama pants you wear. Now make sure the waistline isn't too tight um, if you're tucking your ostomy into the waistline, or it will inhibit output from falling to the bottom of the pouch, and this can lead to a blowout. So have either a very loose waistband, or you can wear your ostomy above your PJs. Also, you can wear a loose belly band or a bandeau, like we talked about in the dressing section, to bed, if that makes you feel more comfortable. Another great tip is if you sleep on the side that your ostomy is on, the mattress can support your ostomy and that will help the weight not wake you up. But if you sleep on the side your ostomy is not on, you can hold a pillow against your abdomen or set your ostomy on a pillow and this will just hold the weight of the ostomy right next to your skin so the tugging of a full ostomy pouch won't wake you up in the middle of the night. The third complaint is I can't find a comfortable position. So I just want to really quickly go over some positions. Uh, back sleepers are really in luck. Usually they don't have to make any modification and sleeping can be easy with an ostomy if you're a back sleeper. Now side sleepers, like we did talk about in the prior slide, some modifications may be necessary if you sleep on the side that is opposite your ostomy. And once again, that's just splinting your stomach with a pillow or laying your pouching system on top of a pillow. Now, stomach sleepers, definitely some modification is necessary. Um, and this is the top picture. I'm showing you one of the modifications that I use, and that's to bend the leg that is on the side that your ostomy is on. And this creates a little bit of space in between your stoma and the bed. So you're not squishing your ostomy pouch or your stoma. And that's okay, but also if you want to put a pillow into the empty space, if that makes you feel more comfortable, that is completely okay too. And right after surgery and sometimes even after I've had a really difficult, painful flare, your abdomen may be too sore to lie flat. So you can try a modified sitting up position. And there are tons of different ways that people can do this. So just really experiment and find the sitting up position that's most comfortable for you. This is my go-to modified sitting up position. And I'll just explain how I do this. I put my feet about shoulder width apart and I lean my knees together. You can also put a pillow underneath your knees so they don't fall, fall down. Um, I also put two or three pillows to support my back and I splint my stomach. Now, splinting your stomach with a pillow is really great because it helps to 
keep pain to a minimum. And this just allows for your abdomen to have as little movement as possible when you're splinting your stomach. The fourth complaint is I have major anxiety about having a leak in the middle of the night. So some solutions are to not let the pouch get overly full during the night. Um, once you adjust, usually the weight of the full pouch will wake you up, but if it still doesn't, then I would say set an alarm. Uh, find out how frequently you do have to empty. So if it's every six hours, then set an alarm for every six hours when you sleep, so you'll only have to wake up once. Um, Change your ostomy pouches frequently as instructed by a nurse or a doctor. This is important because as time goes on, the adhesive from the barrier just naturally breaks down a little bit and makes the seal um, less strong. So changing the ostomy pouch frequently will help to keep the adhesion to your skin very strong and help deter leaks. Also, thicken the output if it's too thin and watery that it results in a leak. Um, really thin, watery output um, can get underneath the wafer much more easily than thicker output. So you can do this by, you can thicken by modifying your diet by adding bananas, applesauce, and bready foods like toast and crackers and pretzels. But on the other side of that spectrum, thin your output if it's too thick and sticky that it sticks to the top of the bag around the stoma. We call this pancaking and it can lead to a blowout because the stool is not going into the bottom of the bag. It's kind of building up and eventually just causes the pouch to pop off. So how you can thin your output is just to drink more fluid. So those were the four common complaints and I've got a couple other sleeping tips for you. If you find yourself in pain at night, either from surgery or scar tissue or another condition, it's really a good idea to take your pain pills your surgeon or doctor prescribes and also to keep them by your bedside. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and it's been your allotted time in between doses and you're in pain, then instead of walking across the room to grab your pills, they're right there with a glass of water and you can pop them in your mouth and then try to go back to bed. Also, using a heating pad on a low temperature that ideally turns off after three hours, so this will just prevent you from burning your skin. Um, that's a really good pain tip as well. And like I was talking about before, splinting the abdomen with a pillow or extra blanket can help pain subside. Also, another great tip is, like I was saying, to keep water by your bedside, not only to take pain pills, but even if you don't take pills during the night, um, I always wake up feeling really dehydrated. It's kind of um, very common for people with ostomies to feel dehydrated. So just always having water right there. So if you wake up, you can drink right away. Also, use a nightlight or keep the restroom light on with the crack door so you can see where you're going if you get up in the middle of the night. So if the light does bother your sleep, you can wear an eye mask as well. So the last topic for today is intimacy with an ostomy. And this is just an introductory statement I'm going to read. Intimacy is a part of the human experience that can be extremely beautiful, but also very vulnerable. Um, then you add a body altering surgery like an ostomy, um, and you also have a change in body image. And thinking about intimacy can really start to become a little intimidating and scary. So this is a completely normal feeling, but I promise with a little preparation, pep talk, and open communication, intimacy can be just as wonderful, fulfilling practice between partners as before. So first, I really quickly want to touch on communication with a potential significant other. So this is for people who are single during and after ostomy surgery. So, First of all, initial communication about your ostomy should happen before the clothes come off. There's really no time limit um, or timeline and you should tell your ostomy. Really, it's whenever you feel most comfortable about telling someone about your ostomy. I personally always choose after a couple. The person knows me on a little deeper level, but if you would rather tell them on a first date, that's okay too. It's really personal preference. 
But when you do bring up your ostomy for the first time, try to approach the topic with confidence. I find that if you seem confident and happy with the fact that you have an ostomy and life in general, odds are the potential partner will feel more comfortable with the ostomy. So no matter who I'm telling, if it is a potential partner or if it's a friend or a family member, I always try to put a positive spin on it because I'm never trying to evoke sympathy. I'm just trying to evoke understanding for my way of life. And when you do tell this partner, try to talk about why you have the ostomy, how you got it, and what it is. So when I told my now significant other about my ostomy, I started with the why by talking about what my experience was being dangerously sick with ulcerative colitis, not being able to do the things that I wanted to do, not remembering what a pain-free day felt like. And then I continue by saying, eventually I needed surgery to save my life. And I usually add, I'm so much better off after surgery, just putting that positive spin on there. And then I go into the how and what. I talk about how the surgeon removed my colon in 2011 and left a little bit of the small intestine sticking outside of my abdomen, and it's now surrounded by a pouch. I was being really tricky by not saying exactly what I meant, but of course, right after that, he tactfully, tactfully asked, so you poop in that pouch? And I just answered very honestly, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And since I did spend a little bit more time getting to know him on a deeper level and him knowing me on a deeper level, he did say, well, I'm glad you're here and I'm here to stay. So since then, he's been one of my greatest supporters. But I do want to add that we try to make sure our relationship has many moving parts when I'm well. So our relationship never revolves around my illness. And I did make that mistake with a prior relationship when I was first diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. But that being also said, when I'm sick, open communication is really important and I really ask for help when I feel I need it. I also want to say that not all of my situations have gone as well as my current one, um, but I always have tried not to take too much offense. It's a little hard, but I try not to. And Simply think of my ostomy as a way to weed out people that I wouldn't really want to date anyways. Um, so this is interesting because when you're in a relationship, you need someone to support you through physical, mental, emotional issues. So um, I just kind of look at it as a way of weeding out people I wouldn't want to say in sickness and health too. So next I want to talk about um, communication with a long-term significant other or spouse. So this person will have gone through the ups and downs of illness with you and have seen you through um, your surgery. But I think it's still very important to have open, honest communication about the ostomy. Try to understand that he or she is also going through some changes with your body, but also with the two of your relationships. So I would ask some open-ended prompts so that you can really gauge how they feel and open up communication. So these are four that I came up with, or yeah, four that I came up with, but feel free to use any different questions that you like. But mine are, what's different about our relationship now that I have an ostomy? How do you feel about my ostomy? And if they say, this could go both ways, they could say, well, I'm really scared of hurting you now that you have an ostomy, or I'm not sure how to maneuver my body around your ostomy. That's okay, that opens up communication. But they also may say, I love your ostomy because you're healthy now, you're still here. So it can go one of two ways. Um, then also ask, how can I support you through this new lifestyle change? And how can we support each other through this new lifestyle change? So as you and your partner get more comfortable with your ostomy um, as, and as you heal, time will come to be intimate. So there are some tips and tricks to help you feel just as sexy and confident during intimacy with an ostomy as you did before. So first, these are kind of the more logistics of intimacy with an ostomy. So first and foremost, empty your pouch prior to intimate moments. This just makes intimacy more comfortable for both of 
the partner, so it's empty and there's not any sort of weight on your abdomen. Um, and it's okay to excuse yourself for five minutes prior to intimacy to stop and say, hey, I really need to go to the restroom, I'll be right back. Also use deodorizing drops or spray. Generally, there's no odor that comes from a closed ostomy pouch, but if it makes you feel more comfortable, I'd absolutely say do anything that makes you feel more comfortable, and then you can ensure that there's nothing in the air except for love. Um, use an opaque pouch or a pouch cover if you do have to use a clear ostomy pouch. Um, this allows to conceal the contents of the pouch, uh, conceal your output. And lastly, for ileostomus only, ask your doctor if you can take Imodium, Beno, or Gasex about 20 to 30 minutes before intercourse if it's anticipated. I know it's not always anticipated, but this just allows to slow down your transit time and allow you to have a um, less full pouch for more amount of time. So I also want to bring to your awareness, if you haven't um, seen these products, that there are products made to conceal your ostomy during intimacy. And there are specially designed wraps and lingerie and underwear that once again have pockets built in to make you feel unencumbered. But also you can use bandos um, and stomach caps. So for example, the wraps here at the bottom of the page are intimacy wraps for men or women. They're unisex, but they're in the men's section of Ostomy Secrets. And also, um, here's an intimacy wrap, also by Ostomy Secrets, that just has a little tan pocket inside, and you put your ostomy there, and it's called the illusion wrap, because really your ostomy just disappears before you're in your partner's eyes. And here are some specially designed underwear from Vanilla Blush. You can also use stoma caps for colostomates only, um, because you don't have as much output as frequently as your ostomates or ileostomates, you can use just a stomach cap to have a smaller little pouch on your side during these times. I really quickly want to wrap up by saying that intimacy can be just as enjoyable with an ostomy as before, if not more so, because you're healthy. And the intimacy with an ostomy should not be painful, so if you're experiencing some pain, definitely talk to your doctor. I just want to really wrap up by saying that the right person will love you for who you are and not what you have. But I think you can also help your partner love you by loving your own body and yourself and appreciating your body for what it is, which is a beautiful, resistant, strong body that has been through so very much. So before I open it up to questions and answers, um, I do want to point out some of our resources. So at the very top, this is our community site, and it is shieldhealthcare.com slash ostomy life. And you can find the recorded webinars here. You can find videos of how to dress with an ostomy, how to tell someone, how to change the ostomy, how to swim, and lots of blogs. It's a great resource. You can also contact me at askflora at shieldhealthcare.com. And you can also be a part of our community. We would love to hear your stories and your input and your tips and tricks. So you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ostomy life. You can follow us on Twitter. And you can also follow us on Instagram, which is just our username, ostomy life. So that will conclude our prepared part of the webinar. I would love to open it up to questions and answers. So thank you, Eric. Great. Thanks, Laura. That was awesome. Um, if you have a question for Laura, please type it on the question box to the right-hand side of your screen. Um, it doesn't have to be about the related topics, but um, yeah, so type in your question on the right-hand right side of your screen. So uh, first question here, uh, I can't wear slacks with front zippers because my pouch blows up like a balloon. What can I do? So that's a really good question. Um, I would suggest if you're not in a pouch with a filter, then definitely ask your WOCN or your doctor if you can switch to a pouch with a filter. Um, you can also ask your doctor if you can take Gasex or Beano. Uh, this will just help really just not have as much gas output from your stoma. And lastly, if you do want to get um, a two-piece bag, if you want to ask about that, you actually can burp 
your two-piece bag and let out some gas without having to go and empty the entire thing. And I'm sorry, I used um, the acronym WOTN. That just means Wound Ostomy Continent Nurse. Great. Um, my young patients complain of noise. Any advice? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So um, noise from the stoma or from during intimacy, I'm not quite sure. But if the noise complaint is from the actual stoma outputting, um, sometimes you can feel just right prior to when the ostomy, when the stoma outputs. So what I usually do when I was in college and we were taking a test and the room was quiet, I would just put my hand over my stoma and kind of muffle it. Also, I would just kind of pass it off as my stomach growling instead of um, my stoma outputting. Great. We have a question from Debbie. Do you wear a belt? I, I find some people always prefer to wear a belt. Is this, is this safe? Um, a belt, like an actual stoma belt, or are we talking like a regular belt? I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm assuming a regular belt. Okay, so a regular belt, absolutely that is safe, especially if it's not right on the stoma. Um, Sorry, stoma belt. She didn't stoma belt, <laughs> okay. A stoma belt is absolutely safe. They're specially made for um, this type of thing, and it's another way that you can conceal your ostomy. Um, they're a little bit more bulky since I'm kind of a littler person, but for some people they work fantastic. Um, here's a great question here. How can I support a male patient that is angry he had emergency surgery resulting in a colostomy? That's really hard because, um, because people will be angry until they decide not to be. But I think really um, trying to drive home the point that this surgery did save his life and kept him here is a very, very important thing to talk about. And also maybe to show him some resources. He can go online and on YouTube and just type in the word ostomy and he'll find all of these young patients, men and women, who are living positive, active lives with an ostomy and seeing that this Yes, it's huge and it's life-changing, but it doesn't mean that life has to stop and be any less beautiful. Really might be good for him to see. So I would definitely say send him to some resources and you can send him to our website or just type in Ask Me on YouTube or Facebook and all sorts of things will come up. Yeah, I think that was probably the biggest reason why we started Ostomy Life here at SHIELD and why uh, we brought on Laura Cox because um, she is a resource for those who are not familiar with having an ostomy or a colostomy. So um, we appreciate all your, your help on that. Um, do you have any suggestions about international travel with a permanent colostomy? Um, yeah, of course. I have gone on four international trips since I've had my ileostomy. A uh, little bit different, but kind of same idea. Some tips would be to pack twice as many supplies as you think you'll need because it is very difficult in another country to find any ostomy supplies. Also, to keep all of your supplies on a carry-on so that if your luggage does get lost, it's with you. I also use um, cut-to-fit wafers still because my stoma is oblong. So if you have cut-to-fit, um, I would pre-cut the wafer so that if they take away your scissors, then you still have something on the plane if you do have a leak. Um, and I really do want to talk really quickly about security as well. Uh, if you have traveled before, you know that going through security, about half the time they catch your ostomy and half the time they don't. So I would just go in prepared to explain what a colostomy is. Usually the TSA is trained on ostomy, but if they don't, just say it's a pouch that is surgically placed there. And usually they'll just have you pat your stomach and then they'll swipe and test your hands for any sort of chemicals. Great. Sorry, did I cut you no, off? no, no, that's okay. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, it's um, international travel really is great. I also want to say, make sure you stay hydrated. Talk to your flight attendant about, hey, can I have a little extra fluid um, if it's a long flight? And also maybe get up and walk around a little bit to stretch your legs so that you don't get any edema or any fluid buildup. Great, thank you. I think that's all the time we have for questions. If you do have a question for Laura, uh, 
please email her at asklaura at shieldhealthcare.com. Um, and uh, she's pretty good about answering emails. So uh, yeah, any other questions, feel free to email her. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Laura Cox for her great presentation. I thought that was really insightful. Uh, for the healthcare professionals out there, our next webinar will be August 25th, and the topic is identifying skin damage, pressure ulcers, and incontinence, incontinent associated dermatitis. Say that five times. <laughs> So um, thank you very much for participating. Uh, again, this is recorded. If you miss any portion of this presentation, you can go onto our shieldhealthcare.com Ask Me Life community page. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending and have a great rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.